The federal hiring process could be changing later this year. This is due to new regulations that will increase the flexibility that federal agencies have when hiring new employees. Now in the past, the old rule was called the rule of three. And the way that this would work is that the agency would review a list of the three most qualified candidates ranked by a numerical score. So how do they come up with this numerical score? Well, each question and answer on the assessment had a numerical value or weight to it based on its importance to the job. Candidates would then be assigned a score from 70 points to 100 points. And if you were a veteran, that would go up to 105 or 110 points. Now the problem with this is the hiring managers, they were passing on all three candidates. So take for an example, you have a job announcement that 200 people apply for. 20 of them are highly qualified, but you could not select 17 out of those 20. You could only select three, the top three. So that limited the options when looking for the best qualified candidate. But then about 20 years ago, a new hiring process included category ratings. And the way that this would work is that groups of qualified applicants would be placed into three categories, such as good, better, and best, or qualified, highly qualified, best qualified. This allowed hiring managers to pick anybody from that bucket, the highly qualified or the best bucket, they could pick anybody from there. The only stipulation is a veteran, if a veteran was in that bucket, they had to be picked before a non-veteran, unless the Passover procedures were executed. One of the issues with this is not every category had a ranking. So there was not a number assigned to the candidates and that made it a little difficult to compare candidates within the same bucket. Four years ago, the rule of three was eliminated, but the numerical rating was asked to be retained. The new rule is called the rule of many. OPM proposes that federal agencies use one of the four procedures when selecting candidates. The first one is a cutoff score based on the assessment. This involves a cutoff score, a minimum amount in order to be considered. Now, they're also talking about assessments here. And you may, may have received an email from US Hire in order to do your assessment. You answer about 60 to 100 different questions on different topics and they assign you a score. Now you, as the person taking the test, you don't know what your score is, but once you complete it, it's good for up to 12 months. The second one is a cutoff score based on business necessity. And this is almost the same thing, except it takes into consideration that certain agencies they don't have the resources to do structured interviews for every applicant. If that agency has limited resources, they're just not going to be able to do 20, 25 structured interviews. The third one is a set number of the highest ranked eligible applicants. So this involves establishing a number of applicants. So it could be top five, top 10, top 12, whatever it is. The fourth one is a percentage of the highest ranked eligible applicants. This is similar to the last one, except it's in percentage form. So it could be top 10%, top 20%. If you only have several people applying, it could be top 50%. When it comes to a specific number, say you wanna do top 10 and the 10th individual, they have a score of 95. That means everyone who has a score of 95, they have to be included in that top 10. So your top 10 could grow to top 13 or top 14. The same thing with percentage. So if you're doing tw top 20% and that bottom person at the top 20%, they have a score of 93. Well, then everyone else who has a 93 gets lumped into that group as well. Each hiring agency, they have to identify ahead of time before the job is posted exactly what procedure they're going to use. And the information and the data associated with the procedure, that needs to be retained. In case OIG, the Office of Inspector General or GAO, if they decide to audit that agency, all that data needs to be transparent. Here's an example on how this would work. So if a federal agency set 95 as the cutoff score, and we have six people that meet that score, numbers one, two, four, and five can be selected. Number three and six, they're not veterans. That's what the MV stands for. And the TP, that stands for five point veteran with no disability. XP is a veteran with a disability less than 10%. If an agency wanted to select a non-veteran, in this case, they would have to exercise the Passover procedures. Another thing that people don't realize is many people decline job offers. There was one case where a veteran was extended a job offer. 
they declined. So it went to the second veteran, they declined. We had literally three or four individuals back to back declining job offers. So then it would look like this. Number one with 98 points declines job offer. And then number two with 96 points accepts the job offer. All right, so why the reform? Why the change? If you've been following this channel for any length of time, you know the federal hiring process is difficult. It takes right now roughly on average four to six months in order to get a government job from the time you start applying to your first day. That's how long it takes. There's also been this idea for the last four or five years that your skills and abilities should trump education. And that's where the government is kind of leaning more towards. That is why you see U.S. higher assessments. They want to assess your ability more than seeing a degree on your resume. I want to stress to you that you should not go into debt chasing after a master's degree or your second or your third master's degree because you can't find a job right now. That is not going to move the needle very much unless your industry demands a master's degree. Your time is better spent looking for opportunities where you could take your experience and match it with the job or you can increase your skills and abilities. Someone commented on a video last night that was asking the question, do we really need to attract the best and the brightest in the government? What's the purpose of that? I think it is important. For one, right now the government leans heavy on contractors. If we have more proficient individuals in federal government job roles, then there's a case to be made that we don't have to rely so much on contractors. And in some positions, you will find two or three individuals that are doing the same job that one person might be able to do. And when you look at different agencies, you walk around in their offices, you'll get an idea. There's some agencies that are moving like lightning. People are running all around, getting a lot of stuff accomplished. And other agencies, I, it could look like a turtle farm. People are just barely trudging along and they're not getting very much done. So it is in the national interest to make the federal hiring process more transparent and more enticing in order to attract and retain those highly proficient individuals. If you are still interested in getting a federal government job, I did a live stream recently and I answer over a dozen questions. There's timestamps throughout the stream to make it easier for you so you can save time. If you're interested in knowing what those are, I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.